Uh, so I just have two two other quick, really quick questions. Uh, yeah. Uh, one is uh, like watching watching the YouTube channel. You you reference a lot to like uh, biblical uh, the translations, I guess, in a sense, and how it applies, things like yeah. that. So I was wondering if uh, you. I, I think someone else has asked the question too, but uh, if you were gonna do any like, uh, you know, further, I guess, elaboration on different things that, uh, that different things in the Bible. What you, it seems like you have something in mind. What is your question? I, I was just. I mean, this is this is Q and A. If you wanna, uh, if this is Q and A. If you got a question, ask your question. Uh, that, I mean that that that's the question for real. I was just wondering if you were gonna do any. Uh, you want me to? Any, okay, so let me. See. You want me to expand on religion? You want me to expand on the concept of God? You want me to expand on the concept of good and evil? You want me to expand on what? What is it you want uh, me to expand on? Uh, nothing like currently right here right now. I was just wondering if you were gonna do any more videos. I'm gonna do it in the future. Okay, I got you. Got you. Yes, yeah, so let me tell you something. Um, you know. Uh, spirituality is it is connected to everything you right. cannot separate spirituality from anything because see everything is connected so that so the reason I'm not talking about the Kabbalion because the Kabbalion under the principle of correspondence okay it's a very important principle for you to understand that what correspondence is talking about is talking about the mental spiritual and physical planes Okay, these are planes. Okay, now these planes are simply different degrees of vibration. Okay, and the, the best example is like water. Water goes through all three states, solid, liquid, and gas. It starts as a gaseous state. Okay, that's the mental. Then it goes into a water state, which is spiritual. And then it goes into a physical state, which is ice. Okay, water is invisible to the eye, but then as it, it condenses, as the vibration slows down, it starts to materialize. Well, this is an important principle to understand in order for you to understand manifestation. When you think of something in your mind's eye, it exists. It's not your imagination. Okay. Anything you can conceive and believe you can achieve. If you can imagine it, you can bring it into reality. You can bring it into reality. The only limitation you have is your imagination. And you do have limitations because if I tell you to think of a color that could that doesn't exist, you couldn't do it. You can only imagine things that you can associate through some sort of experience. Okay, so I right, so when you think of something, it exists. Your next goal is to how am I going to bring it into the physical? That's when people tell you that you have to think about it all the time intensely. You have to hold that that thought in your mind's eye, and it starts to coalesce. And then it will start to manifest on the physical plane through the three different states, just like water does. The procedure for doing that is concentration and visualization. Okay, you got to con. That's why they tell you write your goals down and read them every day, or they tell Christians to pray every day before you go to bed because the superconscious is open at that time, and you're carrying your thoughts back into the superconscious and manifesting it. Anything that you think about all the time manifests. I, we live on the plane of time and space. It requires time to manifest on this plane. When you think about it on the mental plane, it instantly exists. This is also another reason why you got to train your brain so you will not go to hell. Because you go to hell, you're going to give yourself hell when you die. Because when you go to the mental plane, everything you think about will instantly appear. So you want to think about a dragon, it's going to instantly appear. There's no buffer on the mental plane. When you're on the physical plane, there's a buffer. Okay, there's a buffer, there's a time lapse between you thinking of something and it manifests. We don't want to think of a dragon and it instantly manifests. So we should be thankful that the natural laws have given us a buffer to make sure that whatever it is that we want, I, it gives us time to change our mind. So repetition is what is going to cause it to go into the subconscious mind, which is the fem feminine aspect of the consciousness. Another principle of the seven principles, which is gender, masculine and feminine. The feminine or mother nature manifested into existence. These things that I talk about, you can look at a per, you can tell a person's uh, thoughts by looking at their condition. You can tell a person's thought if they have lofty thoughts, they're gonna like I like this dude, this new dude, dude Andrew Tate. I love him because he's so full of confidence. He's such an alpha male. He's wealthy. He's articulate. He's an intelligent. I love this guy. You know, it's like you know because. Because he has strong, he has a strong mind, and that might offend some weak men. 
you know, weak men get offended by men who are very strong, who very, you know, a lot of people get offended, women too, sometimes. They get offended if a man, they call him cocky or something like that because he's full of confidence. But that confidence, like Donald Trump, they don't like him. They think he's confident. But he always talks highly of himself. His self-talk, his self-talk, his uh, self-talk is on the God level. That's why he's a billionaire. Self-talk is important. <laughs> yes, his very, if you listen to him talk, he always talk highly of himself. And that's how you should be doing with you. You should be talking how you don't speak down on yourself. You got to watch yourself dialogue because words have power and you got to respect words. Words are vibratory frequencies. That's the third principle. The first principle is mentalism. We think of it. The second principle is correspondence. We got to know the procedure that a mental thought is carried into the physical. Vibration is the next principle. That, that thought is carried through a vibratory frequency into the physical. There's a rhythm to that vibratory frequency. One, uh, that's the fourth principle. It has two sides to that vibratory frequency. Everything has two sides. That's where alchemy comes from, changing something from one state to the next. But it has to be some sort of association for it to occur, like love and hate, hot and cold. You know, you can't turn cold into hard. Hot and cold are on the same polar plane. So you can convert something from one to the next. Hate and love or indifference and love. All right. Je envy and, and confidence, you know, all of these different emotions are, it have two sides to them. This is also how you um, correct your character by, first of all, you have to have, you have to do some introspection and be truthful to yourself. You have to know thyself and to thyself be true. That's the first step of initiation. If you can't be honest with yourself, if you can't tell yourself the truth, you ain't going to never achieve anything. You ain't going to never achieve no level of happiness because you get a constant state of denial. You're living in an illusion, a perpetual illusion. You're crazy. They have every right to be afraid of you. They have every right to be afraid of you because it's like a child with an AK-47. You got all this power and you don't know how to use it and ain't trying to learn. This is what they mean when, when Winston Churchill or Teddy Roosevelt was saying that a sovereign is responsible for the power that nears in him. That power, you're responsible for that power. You have to take responsibility for it. But you have a party out here teaching you to be a victim. Oh, you're a victim. Everything is victimization. Victimization. That right there is insanity. It's insanity because you're doing it to yourself. And because you refuse to recognize the power of your own thoughts, you stay in a perpetual hamster wheel of keep thinking of stuff that's detrimental to you, it occurring to you, but you won't take responsibility for it. You keep blaming outside blame on some something else or some other person. When if you to change the condition, you just need to change the way you think, which is very challenging. That's not an easy thing to do. It's not easy to think positive all the time. But I tell you this, that's when my life took off. My life took off when I got rid of all the self-serving people in my circle. When I got rid of all the negativity, when I you had to eliminate people out of your life, man. Right. You got to eliminate people out of your life. You got to release that burden. That's you what I am right now. Too, you got to release that burden. I don't care who it is. I don't care if it's a baby mama, a baby daddy, a husband. You know, I don't. I don't condone divorce or anything like that. But if it is something and you feel strongly about enough about where you're going. You're going to have to release it out of your life because the only way you can be successful and happy in life is by being in a constant state of positivity. So why would you keep negativity around you? These are vibratory frequencies. These are forces. You got you live in a sea of vibration and that vibration bends to your will. That's why you were given a will. The seat of the will is the conscious mind, the seat where you can make the seat where you have free will. That is the guardian of the gate. That's the masculine principle. The masculine is a protector and provider. It protects the subconscious from unwanted thoughts and it provides the subconscious with wanted thoughts. That's why the subconscious is feminine and the subconscious is directly connected to nature, which is why they call it mother nature. We could go into the depths of these discussions, but all of this stuff that y'all learning is all about understanding the power of you, that everything is subject to you because everything, the creator of the balanced universe made you the gods over everything. They made it, they made everything subject to your will, but you got to know how to use, utilize it. That in itself is the essence of spirituality. Spirituality is a science. 
That is the science understanding how the forces of nature operate and getting to a level where you can make them bend to your will. It takes on many different forms. Sometimes it grows into a, something called magic. Sometimes it grows into something called witchcraft. Sometimes it grows into something called voodoo. Sometimes it grows into something called Christian science. But all of it, all of it, when you study all of this stuff, it all rests on those same seven principles. Now, what you do with those seven principles could be determination of whether something is called good or evil. But the nature itself is not good or evil. Nature itself is just is. It's you with the free will to decide to do something beneficial to yourself and humanity or something that's detrimental to yourself or humanity. It's just like a knife. A knife is not good or evil. You can decide how you want to use it. That's the power that's been placed in you. That's the power that you have. But it's going to require that. And that is that is the essence of sovereignty. A sovereign is a person who thinks for themselves. You can't allow somebody else to think for you and call yourself a sovereign. And now that is a deep question, too, because now we have to do some introspection to find out whether or not we are indeed thinking for ourselves or whether or not our thoughts are being influenced by somebody else. Or are you totally free of influence, especially in a world where, called, where, where everybody on social media is called an influencer? You've been bombarded by influence on a daily basis. It requires work to be a God man or a God woman. It requires work, man. That's not no joke. And and sometimes, you know, you don't even have time to do it because you work in jobs and everything like that. You, they don't even give you time to even attempt to do it. That's the whole purpose. That's why I believe that becoming wealthy is the doorway to becoming a supreme uh, a supreme man or woman. Because uh, mastering making money is what's going to free you on the physical plane so you can pursue all these other spiritual activities. All these other wealthy people, they all involved in something spiritual. All of them. They all trying to pursue immortality and trying to understand the true nature of who they are. And what we marvel at when somebody makes a billion dollars is just a small exercise of that. Just a small, it's just the tip of the iceberg getting billions of dollars. That's just the doorway. And then I so <laughs> this is why I talk the way that I do. Because I'm, you know, it's not you. Money don't make you. You make the money. Money don't define. Money doesn't define you. What defines you is your ability to control your thinking in such a way that you can manifest whatever you want. Whether you have a strong will or a weak will, whether you have a moral, uh, whether you have a moral stance or an immoral stance. This is the essence of spirituality, according to use of ale. But when you do comparative religious study, I think that you will find many patriarchs and all of these other religions. When you study deep into the subject matter, that they are all saying a lot of the similar things, but just saying it in a different way. Like yep. Jesus, John 10, 34, is it not written in your word and your law that you are gods? If you call them gods of whom the word of God has come, the scripture cannot be broken. God don't know that in the day that you eat thereof, your eyes shall be open, knowing good and evil. You're going to be like God. Psalms 82, 6. I say you are gods and all of you are sons and daughters of the most high, but you're going to die like men. But you are, you're gods. You're going to die like men. It didn't say you were a man. It said you're going to die like men. And that's another thing. Everybody ain't gods in here. Everybody ain't from the same place. We need to stop that too. Y'all have eight different types of blood types. Everybody didn't, didn't derive from the same point of origin. That's a big. That's the biggest lie that's being told. Everybody ain't don't have the same point of origin. They don't. You got some people, you got some people who act like beast. And then you're trying to raise them up another level, and they're not a level to come off of that. Then you have some people that operate on the level of a kind of a man, call a mankind. But he's not really, he's a kind of a man. And then we got a man. And then we got a you man. And then we got a human being. And then we got a supreme being, and then we have a God. You know, all those are just descriptions of different levels of development as you ascend up the level of self mastery. Those are just the level, those are just names. You don't have to get caught up in names. You calling yourself a God. All it's saying, the only thing you can be God of is yourself. Me calling myself a God is not saying I'm a God over you. Me calling myself a God is letting you know I'm a God over me. I mastered myself. Self mastery, that's right. Yeah.